Well, hello. Uh, was James the first a good king? Well, when I say good, I don't mean nice, virtuous, fun to be around, that kind of thing. To be a good king means that the country's better off for having had you. And your view is likely to be a function of whether you're a Church of England Protestant, Catholic, Scottish Presbyterian, Puritan, or something else. And in the reign of James I, each of them had an agenda that he had to pay attention to, so it's, it's relevant. In any case, some say his intelligence and erudition proves that he did a good job, while others say he had the wrong goals, values, and objectives. I, I look at both sides. First of all, let's deal with those who say, yes, uh, yes, he was a good king. He did a good job. Well, uh, to begin with, he was highly educated, knowledgeable, intelligent, perhaps more so than any monarch since him. Um, at the Council of uh, Hampton Court in 1604, which was uh, convened to consider the complaints of the Puritans, he demonstrated astounding theological and ecclesiastical knowledge as well as formidable debating skills. His ability was a credit to the crown. Chief among his writings are two political treatises, The True Law of Free Monarchies and Basilicon Doron. And these two books expounded his views on uh, the divine right of kings. Now, you may not agree with his conclusions, but you have to admire his willingness to, to set forth his ideas and beliefs in writing. He was exposing his thinking to criticism. He was a peacemaker. He speedily ended England's war with Spain, the Treaty of London in 1604, which uh, concluded the 19-year Anglo-Spanish War. And we have to remember that wars in that area were, era were usually unpopular and invariably expensive. This was thus, it was a major accomplishment. At his initiative, a new translation of the Bible was undertaken, as we all know. <laughs> and the result, the authorized King James Version, as it was called, was a literary triumph, considered by many to be the finest document in the English language. Uh, similarly, arts and literature in general flourished under his reign, and uh, it was a golden age. Uh, the uh, times uh, included Bacon, Shakespeare, Ben Jonson, many others. Uh, it was a fine time. In short, he was a Renaissance man, a monarch to be proud of. Okay, well, what about those who say he was not? Well, there is one principal concern that everyone has about James. He was a monarch of the old school. He believed uh, in the divine right of kings and in absolutely, absolute kingly power and authority. Uh, so in that respect, he was not only out of step with the system and spirit of government in England at the time and the notion of consent of the governed, but uh, this mentality was absorbed by and followed by his son and successor, Charles I. <laughs> and look where that got him. <laughs> uh, he also did not manage to instruct his son properly in how to stay out of war, having himself been uh, an advocate of peace. Charles had uh, several unsuccessful military adventures, including that which uh, resulted in his ultimate demise. Uh, James's gay scandals at court undermined the image and stature of the monarchy, which had been very carefully cultivated by uh, his successor, his, pre his predecessor, Elizabeth. He embarked upon a close friendship with the married Earl of Lennox, to whom he even dedicated a poem. <laughs> uh, Protestant nobles disdained James' enjoyment of demonstrating uh, public displays of affection with the Earl. This, this damaged the strength of his leadership. Whether or not you support that kind of thing, it didn't go big in those days. <laughs> All in all, he was a man out of sync with the requirements of the job. Well, uh, with all of that, what's my take? 
Well, let me start uh, by expressing sympathy for James' start in life. He was a sickly child. His mother abandoned him. Uh, She abdicated. She was in prison and then finally had to flee Scotland to save her own life. Um, All the time, uh, this this is by the time he was two. Then his father was murdered, who was incidentally his mother's second cousin. Woohoo, not a good idea. And then his brother, on whom he doted, died. All of this in early childhood. Wow, yeah, poor kid. <laughs> but anyway, back to the question before us. Paradoxically, James was a bad king who was good for Britain. His imperious, autocratic view of the job and the way in which he passed this on to his son had the unintentional and ultimate result of confirming the supremacy of parliament, uh, underpinning the notion of the consent of the government, charting the course, uh, not only for the huge successes of the subsequent centuries, but ensuring that Britain would not be destroyed by the madness of excessive monarchical power, as happened in France and in Russia. So, uh, all in all, he demonstrated how to be a good king by not being a good king. Well, I hope you liked that. If you did, please do the usual. Uh, Give me a a like, subscribe, uh, notify, uh, and comment. And I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.